Let's get to, um, to back to the broad commodity market. We're joined by Philip Strebel, Chief Market Strategist at Blue Line Futures. He's going to give us some commodity trading ideas for the week ahead. Philip, before we get going, have you looked at that Ford truck? Would you ever buy one of those? Uh, I just bought a Range Rover Velar, so I'm out of the market right now. However, you know, the problem that we have is there's nowhere to play to plug in the battery um, externally. So that's been the issue on getting an electric vehicle because mm -hmm. I'm on an island down near Florida at the moment. OK, so, yeah, actually, yeah, getting that's going to be a big thing. Where can people plug in their cars? Give us your take on the commodity market this week. Is there any risk that the magic is now gone with China, for example, determined to bring down co or stem commodity price inflation? Yeah, the specific quote was China's state planner indicated that they would strengthen price controls on key commodities from 2021 okay. out to 2026. So by them saying that, you saw a bit of a reaction. Some of the key commodities have broken a bit lower. Some of the agricultural commodities, the copper market as well. However, something very interesting is that if you look at a extended chart going back to 2013 on the offshore yuan versus the US dollar, there was a breakout to the upside, which means that their yuan is strengthening against the dollar, making key commodities in US dollars cheaper anyways. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the, the whole U.S. dollar dynamic here with the U.S. dollar generally declining against world currencies in the past year. Um, yeah, because that's interesting. I mean, I, I suppose it makes as the U.S. dollar drops, it makes it harder for the Chinese to sell into the United States, among other things. Yeah, you are seeing our exports pick up quite a bit as we reopen and as some of the logistical issues are solved. We're going to see commodities continue to flow out of the U.S. But again, China is using that strengthening yuan. And they're not only targeting U.S. commodities, they're going abroad. They're buying some of the grains from the Ukraine. They're buying them from South America. And they're buying just abroad. They really want to uh, key up and really build their strategic reserves. We're looking at some of your takes here on copper, uh, on commodities generally, sorry. You think crude is stuck in this range for now, 60 bucks to 67? Yeah, don't be surprised. When we get near 67, you start hearing a couple things. The price has gone too high. The trajectory um, has been quite you know, vertical. When it goes from that low 60s on up to about 66, 67, the chatter that'll be in the news is that OPEC is gonna increase supply, specifically Saudi Arabia. They've been holding back on flooding the market or even damaging prices. Same with Russia, they've been complying with Saudi Arabia. But the other headlines that seem to recirculate are these re lowering the restrictions on Iranian sanctions, which allow them to pump you know, crude oil on the market. It's not gonna be a fast, and it's back in the discussion. That's why prices had rebounded sharply this week. However, I wouldn't be surprised if you look at a chart, especially a daily one, that we cycle mm -hmm. back lower down to 62 to 60. That would be your buy zone up here in this range. That's your sell zone. Um, give us a favorite commodity trade for this week, Philip. What's, what jumps out, uh, what's top of mind for you? The, the two biggest metals that we've been targeting is copper on this sell-off. I think 445, good value zone, could rebound back up to 480. We've been structuring some bullish call condors in that market. And then on platinum, got down in the 1160s. I think it's really good value. You were just talking about the new electric vehicle. A lot of platinum, a lot of copper, a mm -hmm. lot of those rare earth elements go into the batteries and the creation of these electric vehicles. And it seems that, you know, while specific providers of electric vehicles, it's been diluted. It's not just your Tesla. It seems like everyone's dabbling into it. We see this as a mm -hmm. you know widespread phenomenon globally. So those rare earth elements are all are gonna be in play.